What a pleasure now to be joined uh, by Julia Mundy, who is the 2019 George E. Valley Prize winner. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. We Thank really <laughs> uh, appreciate it. And congratulations on the uh, award. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about uh, the work that uh, you've been doing that uh, won the award, was recognized by the award. Sure, so thank you very much. Um, so the work that I've been doing has actually been the work over the last several years, um, starting with my PhD studies at Cornell um, and through my postdoctoral studies at Berkeley. Um, and we've been working on designing new materials at the atomic scale. So in particular, we've been thinking about synthetic techniques to not just control the layer by layer position of new types of quantum materials, but to think at the very finest link scales, how we can tinker with the picoscale distortions in this material. And so we have done this in a few different uh, distinct systems at this point um, and demonstrated how we can access metastable ground states of materials. So access materials properties that might have been hidden as their bulk counterparts. Um, so we've looked at one example of how we can make the first material that's a room temperature multiferroic material, so a strong ferroelectric, ferromagnetic material, um, as well as how we can harness this to access a metastable ground state in a very well-known material, business ferrite, um, where we can increase uh, the energy storage to make a new type of anti-ferroelectric material. So why is this work so important? Yes, um, so we're really quite excited about this work. Um, so um, for both uh, fundamental physics reasons as well as um, how we might be able to apply these materials. So in both cases, um, the ability to design a material at the picometer scale allowed us to access these metastable ground states of the material um, and to be able to uncover new physical ground states um, that we might not have been able to pursue otherwise. Um, but in both cases, it was also, there's a real lineage um, towards applications. Um, so we've also been thinking about, um, for example, with the multiferroic material, how we can take this fundamental physics observation and then be able to translate it into a next generation device. So in that case, we were looking for a material Material that could serve as a platform for a memory device um, that would have ultra low power consumption. Um, so this material um, really provides us the first materials platform that we could think about doing this um, at room temperature um, in a strong ferroelectric, ferromagnetic material. But what's next for you? Yes, um, so I just started my independent career at Harvard University, um, so I'm delighted to be building up a lab at Harvard, um, and we're really thinking about how we can broaden this technical approach, um, so how we can think about all types of materials that we wanted to um, uncover new ground states and new physical properties that have not been explored yet, but how we can uncover those from perhaps known materials, but materials in which we can tinker with the properties at the very finest length scales in order to be able to uncover this functionality. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining joining us and I hope it all goes very well. Thank oh, you. thank you so much. APS TV comes to you straight from the March meeting in Boston. Make sure to come back and explore all of our great content updated each day of the meeting.